G'day Minecrafters and how you going? Steve-O here with another video and today I wanted to uh, give you a video tutorial about integer arrays uh, or interarrays as they are more commonly known as. Uh, interarrays or integer arrays are used a lot m uh, more in programming but they can be used in redstone for cool things like a display screen or a cursor as we've got here. Now I'm not using any spawners or anything, the only redstone is done with command blocks, just getting that out there at the very beginning, uh, just in case people had questions about it. So anyway, we can move this cursor around fairly freely uh, without any hang-ups or anything like that. The only hang-up is waiting for the uh, stupid pressure plate to uh, <laughs> disengage after we've stepped on it, but otherwise, you know, we can move around fairly quickly. Uh, so what's basically happening here is we have basically a 10 by 10 pixel screen. The pix that there is a pixel. Uh, it's a 2 by 2 section of a screen and it's 2 by 2. Let's reset up our cursor position. And yeah, so the main um, thing we see here, that was just loading issues, um, is that the, it basically follows where I want it to go. That's where out of the loading area as well. That's a fraps bug, not a uh, a program bug. That's just because like for example I press it up again and that will be half again but it's actually all there. So yeah, it's uh, got to love graphics gl glitches. Um, so basically like I said how it works is we have a coordinate system. Um, a little bit different to programming arrays in that, for example, we have, well, I guess kind of similar. In programming, you would have a, um, for an array, uh, integers within that array, like a series of integers. So, for example, an array could have five uh, slots in it. Uh, in this case, we don't have any limit to our slots. Um, but we could have five slots, and each slot would have a, a new piece of information. Now, in this case, um, we can actually do the same kind of thing. Uh, the selection method, or the way that we've basically um, displayed this pixel on the screen, is by giving it a an address. So this top corner here has a Y value of 10 and an X value of 1. Our horizontal coordinates are X and our vertical components are Y. So this here would be uh, Y of 10, no, y of 1, sorry, and x of 10, so x10, y1, and the opposite corner would be uh, x1, y1, uh, yeah, x1, y1, that top corner there would be x10, y10, so similar to moving around. Now, how that works with these is we basically have a, a little system here. I did try to set it up with a clock, but this part here is too short. Uh, that's why we have that little bit of extra redstone on the side there. Uh, that's otherwise useless because we can't uh, create a clock with um, with that being powered. Let me show you what I mean by that. Let me uh, power this one here. As you can see, we're not receiving a, a clock. Whereas if we were to extend the signal a couple more blocks, we would receive a clock. Oh, one more. Let's try one more. <laughs> Fail. That's not working. Oh, because we don't have it on minus, that's why. Duh. So that does work, it, it just wasn't on minus. So, yeah, that's basically um, why it doesn't work. It's like one block too short. I mean, I could make it go out one more block in every direction, but some of them, for example, this one here, are only one block long, and it would have just elongated the bottom section too much, and I thought, well, who cares? I'll just leave it as is for now, and, and I'll, I'll leave it with the possibility to maybe extend it later. So just just in case you were confused by that. But basically what I've done to restrict the the edge parts, because as you can see by this, this part here will not go um, any lower. And neither will this go any higher than 10. As you can see, it will not go beyond 10. And the same is true for the sides, but I can't be bothered showing you that. It'll take too long. But basically how that works, let's get rid of these because I like having a nice clean inventory. Uh, on these sides, this is to go backwards. So Y is decreasing by 1 each time, provided the minimum is 2. 
Now, the reason I've got the minimum as 2 instead of 1 is so that when you're on 2, you can get down to 1. If I was on 1, you, you'd, and the minimum of 1, it would go down to 0 if it minus 1 more. So, 2 is our minimum. Now, for increasing, I basically just added irrespective of what it is, and then have this set to 10 if it goes beyond 10, basically. It's not complicated at all. I'll have this up for download so you can check out all the commands and I'll have them in the, the all the syntax in the description. Uh, and that's just a, a light sensor just so I don't have to work in the dark. But uh, yeah, hope you've gained something from this. And this one is just a, a set uh, one for X and Y, setting them to setting X to five and Y to five in the opposite order of what I showed you. But <laughs> You get the idea. Uh, but yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you've gained something from this. Uh, if nothing else, how to use arrays. Uh, if you have any questions, send me a message or whatever, or a comment or something like that, and I'll try and help you out as best I can. But um, anyway, thanks guys for watching, and thank you so much for your continued support. Um, I'm Steve-O, and I'll catch you next time. See ya. Got a little Swedish there. Yeah.